Brother. Yes. Um, I don't know what to say. It's been like, it's really, it's, it's, it's a wonderful pleasure to, to have you on, 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 on today on, on Libation. I'll count it also as a privilege. Ah, I don't know who's privilege. Whether you know, my you're, you're my ogre. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know when you were seven, so, yeah. and uh, no, we related as brothers, actually. Yeah. And that's the beautiful uh, one. Which, 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 but thank you so much. I mean, uh, we have a tradition on this show where we, where I, I will have to present some cola to you. Okay. Uh, as, uh, uh, yes. In my, as in a, my with Oji with Hendo. And I'm not catching it. Um, in my own tradition in MBC, which is uh, almost the same tradition in all, oh, Ibo, in all over Ibo land. Or that no Ibo. I like a one cargo. Or the Ibo. Cabo. Oh, no, no, no. So it goes into my pocket. I got what's in car. This is the only uniting factor all over Ibo land that in every community you do whatever concerns it in a dialect. And uh, God in his mercies mm -hmm. created this that Adeji ma wea makana maneke wani. And also God gave us lobes that yes. you can Easily, use your, your, yes. that's it. Ogo mena na bo mena na. Brother, if any na ne make ita, obale no, bona iga ano. Mwa da de jimbo nyonyo zonsi. Eme chineke jime. Omo ebe eje jimbo abawe ya. Wanda ngo ke meka. Onye boto oji bote endo. Don't you see. I go Asinya gazela ni, aizo shumu umu azwani, aina akanka, anyama mwaya, jima ha, chukukero abiaba, na si ya gazela ni, gazela m, gazela muna ni, na fa Jesus Christ bonye mwani, mwa walunke ni, dalo, ndeni kile ni, kama mkuu, kama tatalo ni, dalo. Mm. I like the way um, you've maintained, you know, we're just saying before, several in camera, that you've maintained yourself, your integrity, your professional discipline through the years, but you've also connected, you know, with like two, three generations of mm -hmm. thespians. Um, people your age and older, younger people, people who are even aspiring to get into the industry, everybody looks, looks up to you. Mm. How have you been, how, is it just grace or is, is there, were you careful about how you sort of conducted yourself and carried yourself over the years? Because look, from 19, at the earliest memory of myself, you know, in, in Living school, coming into the industry, mm -hmm. you, you were already a stalwart of mm. the industry, and you just sort of maintained that rise. You know, even in this age of um, digital, everybody is on social media. Everybody is sending. You, you just, you just keep changing with the times. <laughs> well, you can't be too careful not to make a mistake. Mm. So sometimes there's a, a push you have. You may not know where it's coming from, and that's what people may call grace. You know, I've not been too careful not to make a mistake, but the fact of the matter is, I've tried to do my job with the effort to say, um, I'll do this job not expecting a reward. I'll do it the way it's supposed to be done. If a reward comes in the name of a, mm. an award, better. So progressively, um, I've not seen myself as a star. 
I've always played my role. Because if you begin to think yourself a star, you make too many mistakes because you want to get somewhere. Yeah. And then I've also not talked about money. Because if you place money be before creativity, you may not make it. Mm. But you, as long as you keep on creating content, content is oil. Money mm. will come. It's just a process. So I've tried um, to maintain discipl yeah. discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stay out of um, um, the blogs. Live um, a quiet life. If I'm driving past a road where they sell corn and beer, they can't stop me from buying yeah. corn and beer. So I live life naturally. I associate with the average person on the street, the woman who sells uh, ogo, the woman who sells beer, and so on. Hug them. They are part of yeah. why you are celebrated. Um, and also be in harmony with things as they are. You know, um, um, you know, some people came into Nollywood <clears throat> and began to talk about the new Nollywood mm. and old Nollywood. I was stupid. We don't have old, we don't have old Hollywood. Yeah, Why should somebody same. be creating a new Nollywood here just because of beauty and so on? And you can see that's how most people have ended up as Instagram stars. Yeah. They, are, they don't have that route. They are popular among their boyfriends. And which is very dangerous for the industry. But if you come in, do your job, you'll be celebrated. And that's why these days I don't like anybody calling me veteran or legend because some people act for yeah. just three years and they're called legend. They don't call me the same name you call others. So, I mean, first, let me, I forgot that we are supposed to. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> I heard that from a mutual friend. Okay. He was he was a guest on this show, okay. and so when I gave him, he said to me, "Nah, can I?" I said, "Welcome." <laughs> <laughs> you know, but welcome again. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Good brand. It's it's good. It's actually mm. quite yeah. tasty. But I was going to ask, um, you know, you were already segueing into it. Um, this is an industry you've been in for over thirty something years. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you hate the term veteran, mm. but so, so many people, you know, that's where they, that's how they see you, mm -hmm. even though, you know, just by being who you are, mm -hmm. you, you know, you are, you cross connect across all the different, whether we call it new or old, but you are, you, you are an icon in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but so how do you see the, I like to borrow, borrow I think Davido that says something about new cats and old cats. How do you see our current, our industry today, the, the creative space, especially, you know, within the, um, because Afia now as Afia TV, the, the, the platform that I've, by grace of God, we've put together here in Enugu. Um, how do you see this space uh, within the Southeast? Well, uh, this is also an opportunity to congratulate you and say kudos on Afia TV. Thank you. Um, um, your, your location is quite... Um, um, Spacious. Spacious in the sense that there's a lot you can do from here. Mm. You have a very huge market. And um, whatever you create here, we sell because you're in a region where, I mean, I started from Enugu here, mm. ABS, then ABS, yeah. now ESBS, then NTA, and so on. So the, 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 the um, location is quite uh, a very good one. And um, for me, it's like always coming back home. Mm -hmm. So for you, it should be um, something you can experiment. So for yeah, instance, that's, that's our people are known. Our people are known as traders. Mm. You could also create a series. On it. We actually have some. The apprenticeship. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to explore yeah. on the apprenticeship yeah. thing. You know, and how are people? I have, I already, I already have um, something I'm trying to do uh, to honor the apprenticeship thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but it could be a series. Mm -hmm. I know, for for instance, I mean, I, you may not know, um, Professor John Bull, which was a Glow sponsored yeah. program, was supposed to be modeled after Zebudaya, but a study was carried out, and they found out that the youths of today. 10% of them don't even know who Zebudaya mm. is. 
So they had to create the character of Professor Jambul, a man with conscience who knows everything. So I will also want to see that creation or series that has to do with traders and what apprenticeship has done and so on. It encourages apprenticeship, encourages honesty, yeah. uh, commitment, and so on. Somebody learns a trade. And one is why he's learning is also employing others and so on. I think a series in that aspect we mm. sell. So the, the, the space you occupy in the South East is a great one. We will be willing to come on board in any area to create and uh, collaborate with you on yeah. that strength. You know. well, th thank uh, you. I mean, uh, thank you for the kind words. Definitely um, it's something that, you know, I think that we need to, we need to work together mm -hmm. in, in that respect. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think that the Southeast has suffered from a single story from, yeah. for at least in the last five, six years, the yes. story of it's, everybody talks about insecurity, insecurity, mm -hmm. insecurity. But there's a lot happening here. There's a lot happening. You know, I mean, um, yes, there's insecurity. There's insecurity all over the world. All country. over the world. Yeah, all over the world. You know? all over, somebody so, shot in, yeah. on the streets of New York. They don't yeah, report I mean, it and so yeah. on. Oh. So, I, I, you know, I, I believe that this this space, this region, is, mm -hmm. you know, the, the opportunities here is just limitless. Um, I want to just quickly, I remember, you know, um, I think it was 2007, we had this road show in... In London. <laughs> in London. Mm -hmm. I was going, I was you and I stayed on the same floor. <laughs> yes, on the and you know what happened on that show? Uh, what's this lady, one of the most popular ladies in the world? She died. Whitney Houston. Whitney. On Whitney was on the yeah, yeah, next door. Yeah. And Nigerians were telling me, yeah. hey, okay, you've only stood out anywhere. Go, go and knock on her door. Yeah, Tell I her really you like her. her. I said, I don't want to go to jail yet. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened, though. You yeah. know, but, you know, I, I, I can't forget that. It's part of the program you designed yeah. at, at the census board uh, to put us yes. on it was, a... It was deliberate. Um, yeah. I felt that, look, we needed to profile our industry. Yeah. People, would, people often talk about Nollywood as, you know, then, I mean, everybody was just... It wasn't that we were starting out, but we, we, we had this one, one perception, Yeah. you know, um, you know, Nollywood is is for you know lower middle class. Yes, uh, Nollywood stories are very um, often dealt on uh, so called rituals and mm -hmm. so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And I felt that that's a one sided story. One sided. We've created stars. Yes. You know, we've, we we had we had we have people like Q. Yeah. We have people like Omotola. Mm -hmm. We have people like Genevieve. Mm -hmm. We've created you know hundreds of stars yes. in the whole of Africa. Yes. I, I remember telling someone. Um, and this happened much later. We took, we had a roadshow again when I was on census board to to Kenya. Kenya. And or even Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, Trinidad I and couldn't Tobago. come. Yeah. Because my visa came out late. We've we've so it was deliberate. I I felt that look, we should create a profile. Even the choice of the hotel, that five star was. Oh yeah. Was, was part make, of the packaging. Yes. Yeah. So that no, if you say uh, Hollywood is packaging, why can't we pack? Why can't we package? Why can't we package? Uh -huh. and, 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 yeah. and then put people. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and, and and that's the thing. Um, do you think that our industry, Nollywood, has, you know, where, where would you place it now? Is, is it, unfortunately, I think not in praise of you. Um, you came from multi choice, I think so. Yeah. To uh, census board. Unfortunately, other appointments that followed um, were political, of those who didn't understand the industry. You know, I remember somebody who succeeded you and so on. Uh, when my name was mentioned, so I don't know him. Yes, you know, I don't want to mention names, but the fact is, when you begin to put square pegs in round holes, it doesn't fit. So, uh, on no account should appointments be on political grounds for such technical areas mm. as in censorship and so on. You know, so um, it, it's part unfortunate that we don't get it right when it gets to getting the right people to mm. do the job for us. For instance, you, this could also be the next angle of question for me. Why was I see, seeking political office? Yes, I, I, was, I was going to come to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, this is part of the reason. Mm -hmm. You can't have a medical do doctor discuss the entertainment industry. You can't have... Who be tied the National Assembly that has only lawyers? Yeah. Only lawyers cannot yeah. uh, be in the legis legislat legislative assembly. You need a variety of people mm -hmm. from different disciplines. So we, we don't have people who can speak for the entertainment industry at the uh, policy making level and so yeah. on. So that's why when they come out, they say all oh, these actors, all these entertainers yeah. and so on, they have no respect. So we need to create that space for ourselves where we have people mm -hmm. who have also uh, gone on to become lawyers, who gone on mm -hmm. to become 
PhD holders in the different areas and so on. That will help us when there are policy issues mm. to defend the industry and get us to... Someone, someone asked me to, to... or Someone told me to ask you this, rather. Mm. He said, please ask you, okay. Um, he went to study law. Mm -hmm. Is it because of um, the entertainment industry and was it because to give himself... Because when uh, both of us were in... Very few contracts were signed. Yeah. He said, nah, come on, I remember this film. Come and do mm -hmm. this for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, was it because of the, what you saw in the industry that you felt that um, a background in law will be, will be extremely helpful in, in No, the thing is, I've, or just, let it be said on this program yeah. that I've always wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. And um, what the lawyer does in court is also what the actor does through um, uh, the stage. Yeah or what the pastor does or clergy does on the podium or the pulpit. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a way of speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves. So my wanting to be a lawyer all my life was to be a voice for the voiceless. Okay. Talk to the larger society, defend their rights, you know, which is what I have done because most actors in Nigeria uh, are not so educated to understand that you're a voice and you can set an agenda yeah. With that, voice, that would yeah. be discussed all through the year. You know, you can have an analysis through just a 30 minute script and it will be a cause of discourse. Mm -hmm. So, if we begin to understand the powers we hold as entertainers better, mm -hmm. so my reading law was uh, ab initio, something that I've always wanted to do, okay. something that I've always wanted to uh, become. Um, and so, it came at 58. I turned, I became a lawyer at 58. And what am I doing right now? trying to marry law and entertainment. Mm. Uh, I think I gave you my book. Yes, or, yes, yes. Uh, the Testator, Testator, which I co-authored yeah. with um, Tony Okwaba, yeah. uh, magistrate in Abuja. And that was the first in the series of what we wanted to do with the law background. And secondly, I'm producing a program now which is uh, on YouTube, on Kanayo Kanayo TV. Um, it's called The People's Lawyer. Yeah. The People's Lawyer is a law clinic that educates people about their rights. And when those rights are breached, what to do? What to do? So if your right is violated, for instance, your landlord wakes up, uh, throws you out. You have rights. Mm. Go to court. And when we say go to court now, it is a real court you're going yeah. to. And the law does not joke with the tenant. In fact, the, the tenant has more rights and seen mm. as being at a disadvantage, disadvantage over the landlord because it's like... A student lecturer power. relationship. The lecturer is seen by the law as having more power. more power. So the student will always have his way if he has a good case. So if your landlord throws you out, the law is going to make accommodation for you mm. and say, Did you serve the necessary notices? Seven days, this, this, yeah. this. If the landlord cannot prove, Tenant has a lot of um, recourse. Yeah, yeah to, 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 so so that's what I'm doing with the people's lawyer, okay. and it's been accepted widely, you know. And I'm going to do it for a long time, while I also accommodate other things about the law. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's 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 a lot of opening. We we have we have in our space very uneducated populace. Yeah. The citizenry uh, are not enlightened, so everything we leave it for God. No. Mm. We are domesticating God. I, I, there are certain things I, human beings should do. Absolutely right. Uh, uh, I just chimed this in before we go on on the first break. But you know, because I, I was reading, I think is the Archbishop of Nsoka Diocese. Uh, honor, honor. I read, who, I read him a lot. Who said something just a few days ago? Something about people. You know, as Catholics, we say this prayer: mm. um, Nigeria in distress. So mm. If you're not willing to do anything about it, That's no, it. stop. Stop. Say, prayer is you are just domesticating yeah. God and disturbing God. Yeah. I read uh, Bishop Honor a lot. I w wish to meet him um, very any time. Yeah, I would wish to go to Soka and this, see yeah, him. Great, he, he speaks. Yeah. He speaks to the, the authorities and so on. Thank you. Um, so we've been, uh, if you've been watching, I'm sure you've been watching because it's, you know you don't get this man uh, nine sacrifice. You know we've been. I've been saying to. So you guys, uh, that name, Nine Sacrifice, uh, brings a lot of money. I, 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 it, it should bring a lot mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. And I think my associating with you, I might, um, I might uh, let me be your acolyte and, and work with you on that. We'll be back in a minute and then we'll continue our conversation on libation with uh, the great 
um, the legend himself, even though he doesn't want to be, but he's a legend. We all know he's a legend. Uh, we're back in a minute, so please uh, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. So welcome back to um, this special episode of Libations, and I have uh, my my big brother, um, the legend himself, KOK, Nine Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 had, I, you know I've, I saw you on Tudor's show, um, you know this I think just a couple of weeks ago, you know once in a while these things bubble up and everybody exactly. your 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 people start you start trending especially mm -hmm. this TikTok generation people yeah. just mm -hmm. start. Um, and and I know you obviously, I, I, and I know you sort of like, okay, it's all good. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got kids. Mm -hmm. um, your son, you know, three boys and a girl. Boys, yeah. Um, do they? I'm not going to ask you about how you feel because I know how you feel. Mm -hmm. You've said it multiple times. Mm -hmm. But do, how do they react to that? To you know, especially because they're young people and they're the TikTok generation, they're the social. Unfortunately, yeah. my children don't have time for me. <laughs> <laughs> if you tell them that I died, they say, he's not the one in the house now. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So they, don't, they don't really. My children yeah. don't even talk about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. It's it, it's because it's amazing. I've got you know young kids as well, and um, uh, and I know um, we we have this. It's almost it's. It's like a love-hate thing when it comes to mm. our relationship on social media. Yeah. Like, my daughter will block me. Okay. Oh, yes. Block me many times. And I find out and I follow her. She block. So now she's created a page where she's, she loves photography. So okay. she's so that one, me and her, mm. uh, we do that. But let me ask you, though. In this, because it's important, um, you know, we, we're in this social age where um, people in our industry... Um, everybody's seeking attention, yeah. and they, they believe that if I push whatever story, whatever act, uh, maybe somehow it will help generate attention, which in an attention economy mm -hmm. that we live in, mm -hmm. it might, you know, look at X now, be Musk or be uh, Twitter, mm -hmm. paying people for, for uh, mm -hmm. engagement, mm -hmm. uh, whether, whatever that thing is. And so a lot of people are simulating, in, and this is my own, Personal opinion, I might be wrong, you know, but this is just what I'm, what my God tells me. People simulate controversy mm. in order to be to be relevant. Yeah. yeah, being in the wrong in the news for the wrong reasons is very dangerous, and many people uh, do not care as long dangerous, as dangerous. But long as, they feel it's lucrative. Yeah, somehow. it's lucrative, uh, and they, most people also feel that uh, the way you receive information mm. could be negative to you, but it's positive to me. Yeah. People are willing yeah. to do a mm -hmm. whole lot of things just to be popular, yeah. and that's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Dangerous because you may think that uh, whatever followers you're going to today, you become monetized and yeah. all this stuff. Sometimes those things are staged, like the current things have been happening about some ladies um, in bed. Sex is supposed to be a private thing, yeah. but when you begin to show me the sex you're having with your boyfriend or husband and so on, it becomes offensive. And that's pornography, mm -hmm. you know. So if you are in the entertainment industry, and the best way you think you can be popular is by exposing your bodies, for goodness sake, keep it to yourself. Yeah. Don't make it a public thing, you but know. Isn't I'm it, supposed to be protected. Is, yeah. Isn't it, um, because I, I, one of my um, professors said something, um, I think in the, way back in two, uh, 2010 or 2011, he talked about um, that, Shame. We live in an, an attention economy. He's one of the people that coined uh, attention, the phrase attention okay. economy. And he said that shame died with the Kardashians. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That That's a good one. Shame is dead. Shame you know, is dead, Because yeah. people actively, as you, as you rightly said, mm. as you just said now, people actively create, fabricate, simulate, mm -hmm. you know, especially using sex or, yes. you know. Because sex yeah, sells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to get that attention. Yes. Um, you know, um, we've seen people, um, the reality TV shows of people, musicians do it. Mm, um, mm -hmm. The Kardashians made it famous. In yes. fact, they became one or two of them in the family of billionaires. Yes. You know, so, you know, saying that, I, I, I just want to put you on the spot because you're saying that it is bad, it is dangerous. Yes. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. this, some of these people are actively pushing that that narrative or pushing or doing it in a way that um, 
they can benefit financially from yes. it. So how, why would you, and you're saying it's dangerous. Yes. Is, it, is it dangerous to who? To us as consumers. Yes. But we are the same people who buy their products yes. when they're selling things. So where is the danger? The danger is in, I mean, um, many things happen on the social media. And social media is supposed to be a space where the good, the bad, yeah. the ugly exist. But we want to preach. We're not looking for a, a, a social media where everything is religious. But we're saying that there are certain things you keep to yourself. It becomes content just for your personal viewing. Yeah. When you begin to bring your sex life it's into the public. public space, that is not educating the younger girl how not to abort, how not to do this, it's good for the space. But when it's publicizing your own pornography, we say, people like me will say, no, no matter the age you come from, I did a video about uh, the BBL, Bombo Enlightenment. Yeah. And my, what was my story about doing it? I went to the US in July, 2023, a lady and I discussed, and she said in a hospital, this lady was brought in, beautiful American lady with good hips and so on, fine face. Uh, her boyfriend, who gave her the money to do the bomb bomb enlightenment, uh, because the lady had an infection. Oh dear. And then he walked into the world where the lady was being housed. And when he came in, by the door, he closed his note and said, he stinks here, man, I'm not going to stay here. He rushed out. But he spent all the money for this lady to yeah. go through this. One week later, the girl died. Yeah. And then, what is the need? Putting somebody's daughter on this kind of pain. Because you, ha you know that men have influence over, especially when yeah. they are giving money to these babes. You know, the Nigerian experience is even worse. Because yeah. it's like runs where girls do. to do. How many Nigerian men want their wives to do their bomb bomb? Yeah. And the, the, the number is infinitesimal to to the ones whose boyfriends give three, four, yeah. five millions uh, to do it. And uh, it's, for me, it's akin to boyfriend, girlfriend in secondary school. How many percentage of that gets married after secondary school? Mm. Not up to right. 1%. Yeah. And you put somebody's daughter. I went to also, let me also share a, 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 an experience about this um, uh, lady why, and why I speak strongly against BBL enlargement and making it look public. Mm. I went, uh, I was in Enugu here. A top officer, names we told, uh, he had served in government and uh, was burying the mom and uh, governors, pres um, presidential aides, they were all over because yeah. he was a permanent secretary. So this woman met me and said, my daughter is also in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. Please, can, can you make her, help her to come yeah. up? I said, okay, by the grace of God, lead her, mentor her. And then the young woman was by the corner, came, took my number. We chatted once or twice. And then, um, for nine months, I didn't hear from her. I didn't, because I'm very busy. Yeah. And then she, I posted a video that I had arrived in Lagos sometime last year, or no, two years ago. That day, to tell you that I remember what I'm saying, Ma Macaroni was, the video I was doing for him, that casket I did for him, um, somewhere after Aja, so uh, when I posted the video, the lady said, Uncle, I'm in, I'm in Lagos. And she's, she lives in Enugu here. Yeah. And I said, OK, uh, where in Lagos are you? I'm in Lekki and so on. I said, OK, I'm going to somewhere around after Aja to shoot a skit with Mr. Macaroni. Macaroni. And he said, please stop by. I haven't seen you in a long while. I said, OK, I'll, I'll stop by on my way. Then I arrived Lekki to the right address by the GPS. And then I... Waited outside for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I was wondering what was keeping her. I called and said, babe, I'm here. She said, uncle, I'm coming. I'm trying to get out. I don't know what she was getting out from. And then, another 10 minutes, she wasn't out. I just stepped out of the car and I looked. And behold, there was a young woman walking like an old man with a walking stick. I was wondering what was going on. Then she got out of the car. I said, what's going on? I said, uncle. Long story. She was carrying two pillows. And she, instead of coming to the front to sit, she went to the back to sit, lying. I said, what's, what's wrong with you? Say, this is the first time she's stepping out in 10 days, or about, that she did uh, this, uh, this thing for her yeah. boyfriend. And then, she was now controlling my speed. Uncle, don't speed, though. don't pass 40. That she was in deep pain. And I said to myself, 
How can you cause such pain on yourself, enlarging mm. whatever it is for a boyfriend who may not even marry you? I just kept quiet. I couldn't speak much. Then we, when we go to the location, of course, it takes her about uh, 10 minutes to step out of the car. car. And the question is this. Why would somebody be a, getting into such excruciating pain mm. just to either be on the social media or you're doing it for your boyfriend? It's quite unfortunate. And I did that video and said, any man who will cause my daughter, Olako, to go through this, <laughs> may Amadio have from Ogun and the Amadio have from Bise attack the person. Yeah. Their idea is not to cost anybody. But I don't mm. want our younger ones to emulate that, that unless you do your bomb bomb, we're natural African, we will have the hips. So the social media space is being bombarded by people who want attention. Yeah. And the, you know, many of our followers, if you understand the way comments and likes are done on social media, most people don't even read the comments. It's just a makeamba. Uh, stares at women. It's true. Yeah. He stares at women. Yeah. One thousand other yeah. comments are going to be like that. They don't. They read. It's only one or two who read. Who, read. who will say, "What do you understand by staring?" That's the danger of social mm. media. So most people use social media for what they don't understand, but most use it to generate funds, make quick money or silent money, mm. and so on. So it's a good space, but needs to be looked at from the perspective so the, of veteran society. But for, for top stars, and those who are, I call Instagram stars, especially the ladies, is business. Very... So, 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 that, so, so I think, on that level, both of us tend to agree, though, that, that um, it's, business, it's money. So they seek this attention. They do things um, deliberately to seek the attention mm -hmm. and monetize the attention mm -hmm. uh, that comes from it. So mm -hmm. it's not because you, 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 I mean, like the, one of the biggest celebrities in the world, your the Kim Kardashian, um, you know, it's, it is said that she, she enhanced her body, body mm -hmm. enhancements as they call it. And that has given her, she probably has one of the highest following on TikTok or yeah. on, on social media mm -hmm. and so on. So, they see these things. Mm -hmm. A lot of the young women mm -hmm. in, in our society see these things, mm -hmm. um, even here in our own Nollywood. Um, I've heard stories. Um, um, one of our uh, female celebrities here from um, East, in a, based here in Enugu, told me a story the other day. She was in our studios and she's telling me that sometimes some ladies actually pay yes. to, to feature in a movie so yes. that they're, they're just featured. It's part, of, it's part of the wrongs the girls are doing. Because what happens, it, it, was, it used to happen now. In fact, you've not heard the real story. It used to happen now that women will pay for their faces to be put on the jacket when jackets were running. Hmm. All they need to do is to show you, I'm an actress. Yeah. And they, instead of giving them 50,000, the fee will now be 500. Oh, I slept with an actress. Yeah. But what now happens, which you may not have been told, is that women pay now in most of the films, to be slept with. If the target Oof. is, for instance, a lady who has been eyeing, for instance, um, Yule Doche, and admires him, say, I will pay for his hotel room. Just get me mm. close to him. Just make sure I play the wife or girlfriend. From there, something mm. will happen. Women pay. Women, in fact, it's so bad now that in Hollywood, I'm being practical here, and let everybody, anybody who has anything, mm. a studio come. If you own a good car, you're a, you're a cast for a movie, even if you can act. The producers are willing to use that, your Range Rover and mm. your other car, just because they want to use yeah. it as props. It is not the way an industry mm. operates. The, the producers, these days, what they do is, a fine lady targeting some senators, with free money or some businessmen in Abuja will ask a producer how much to shoot this script. Say 3 million. She drops 3.5 million. She will just have her name as a good producer at the yeah. end. When she goes to Abuja, could I produce this one? I'm, the man is going to say, very enterprising. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it's wrong. And when you see such ladies, 
They can't say their lines. They're just beautiful in the face. And that's what constitutes the Nollywood, I mean, the Instagram stars in mm. Nollywood. And they are, the unfortunate thing is that they are becoming more in number than the good girls. And that's a very bad trend for the industry. It's just like when you have criminals mm. uh, in the legislative assembly. What kind of laws would they make? So we have these girls in the forefront who are willing to do anything. So when, a mo when some money of a business guy, a legislator and so on is stolen, they'll say, all these Nollywood girls. Yes. And most of them have been known to go away with, uh, with money. Uh, yeah, watches and so on. Yeah. Drug people and so on. So it's a very bad trend for the industry. All caused by the social media uh, hype and all this okay, stuff. So now I see the danger you talk about. The danger about. is so... so, that's it, so yeah, because okay. I don't want yeah. to be enveloped with, with, that, with, with yeah, all these yeah. Nollywood girls yeah. and entertainment. I've gone on to become a lawyer. So I don't, there are certain things yeah. I don't want to be associated with. You know, There are certain things I want to defend the industry. Because we have, like us or haters, the fact is that Nollywood is not where it used to be, but definitely not where it's supposed to be. Yeah. We have moved on. And in moving on, uh, we're carrying some baggage which we, need, we need to shed. Mm. And some okay. of the girls... Some who, BBL. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. So not just BBL, yeah. but um, certain things yeah. that are unprofessional, unholy, and so on. Like the Igbos will say, But if you are where a corpse is buried, you definitely know where the head mm. was laid yes. and start from there to excavate. And most of them don't have the history of Nollywood. They don't have the uh, uh, vision. They don't know what the industry. Ask them who is Zebudaya. They'll say Zebudaya. Is that a root or what? We're not saying that you should know everything. Mm. It's just like a lawyer. No, You cannot ask a lawyer a question he says, I don't know. A lawyer will always make an attempt. Yeah. It doesn't make him more intelligent, but make an attempt. Most of these girls can, don't, don't get their lines on set. They can't discuss beyond the BBL. Mm. They can't discuss beyond uh, their beauty and so on. How much a hair cost? How much their mm. nails cost? They can't discuss beyond that. And it's a very dangerous so trend for the industry. Sort of like microwave discussion. Exactly. I, 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 just, you know, we're going to go on a quick break. Um, but I want to ask this question, you know, um, which is... It's, 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 it's really, it's fascinating the industry that we are in and, and the impact of Nollywood. We've seen it, I've seen it. Me and you've traveled the world mm -hmm. um, representing or pushing Nollywood. Mm -hmm. um, and I ask this because the, the way we see our industry now, mm -hmm. I think you've answered some part of it previously in this conversation. But do you believe that the impact that Nollywood has had um, in society, in Nigeria, across Africa, do you think that it's been overall positive? Well, it can be answered in one fell swoop. It's just that um, Nollywood has been a very good platform for even colonizing other African countries. If you remember, many years ago, Ghanaians were coming here to learn the trade. Yeah. Even Kenya, Kenyans sent some people to understudy, understudy what we're doing. So if we were understudied by even some people from America, yeah. it shows there's something we were yeah. doing. Some people say that to be, to be, the, the, to be the TV platform in America, the yeah. black America, yes. they, that they are the Nollywood of America. They, That's it. Yeah. I've always said it, and I wish to be quoted. Denzel is one of American actors I, I enjoy watching, you know. Um, if Denzel does the amount of work I do here in a day, he, the, there will be a den in his name. Mm. Denzel will be gone. <laughs> because we don't. We work under inclement weather yeah. here. We work under, uh, beyond schedule. Yeah. Uh, work in the sun, work in the rain. There's no rest in hour. There's no coffee. Mm. There's no this and so on. So we have worked to establish a Hollywood that you can see what it has given today. It's not at its best, neither is it at its worst. Mm. But the, 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 the banditry of people who have gained access to it and making it look bad. But budgets have increased. Mm. And as, this is also an opportunity for me to say kudos you know, yeah. to most people who have gotten bigger budgets. You know, I don't want to mention their names. But they've gone on to Netflix, they've gone on to Showmas, they've gone on to... I wish I felt TV can have 
a large chunk of this, which we, is going to happen I mean, because we create programs. It's, it's early days. We, me and you, we need to uh, off no, camera. We'll talk. Off there, camera, we'll, there's we'll a discuss. whole lot. I, I, I want to ask because recently there's been this very stupid controversy. Very stupid. I mean, I, you know, um, you hear, oh, um, the Igbo started uh, in Hollywood. Uh, the Yoruba is uh, uh, the origin of. I mean, I just like, you know, what, what's what's that nonsense? But why are we ethnicizing? Creativity, mm -hmm. you know, it's and that's my feeling. I feel that um, everyone has contributed. Obviously, um, the fact remains that uh, the preponderance of the marketers who spearheaded um, Nollywood. What we have to what do. we have, what we know, because when I tell the young cast, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. I say there's a big difference between cinema, yes, cinema, yeah, you know, uh, movies, and Home video, home video, which is what we started. We started, which is that's what, it. It was and called home video. No, yes, Nollywood came later. Actually, the, name, the term Nollywood came in the... Somewhere around, probably, I think it was Professor Haynes. That yeah, American, yeah, yeah, Jonathan. Jonathan Haynes. Jonathan that Haynes, actually, yes. that He coined, interviewed me in Lagos. Yes, I think it was Jonathan Haynes that mm -hmm. actually coined the term, you know, Nollywood. I don't think it was Jonathan. It was some, somebody else, but okay. I, I don't... But, I, but he popularized I think he because popularized he wrote it by the book, story he wrote. Yes, by the story. Mm. Um, which... which I guess there's not been a lot of documentation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one thing, you know, I was speaking mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, Okay, where the, you know, Ahana, yes. uh, Ratus, yes. okay, uh, we need to, we need to tell the story. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here. We're having yes. this conversation yes. because I was telling him that we need to find a way in which we can, you know, maybe through a documentary or through a book from our perspective, begin to talk about you know, the contribution of different people, especially yes. marketers. I, yes. you, you know, when I was DJ of Census Board, yes. I fought with them. They fought with me. Exactly. When we tried to... You are called it, names uh, as well. I, I was called all kinds mm -hmm. of names. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I remember telling them at some point, I said, guys, if we don't embrace digital and grow and do things in a proper way, well, the industry will leave you. Well, yeah, that, exactly. Um, but let's talk of, you know, what I... I, I, I now, let me, uh, like you said, creativity should, in no guise, be sectionalized, yeah. regionalized, religionized, or whatever. We should stop distorting history. Yeah. The nonsense about new Nollywood and old Nollywood should not exist. The talk about um, um, this is, we started this, and so on, let it be part of history. Yeah. For instance, Peter Doche, I'm a senior in this Hollywood, Nollywood business. What he did at mm. Stains Fall Apart was not part of Nollywood. Okay. It's a film, it's cinema. Yeah. He came in 1996. And I'm able to say that today, as we speak in Nigeria, my very good brother and friend and learned mm. colleague, Kenneth Okonkwo, has moved on and unofficially left Nollywood to maintain his law practice. Yeah. But Manu Ludoku, I'm talking about those who were part of the 1992 living yeah. in bondage. But Mano Lidoku has been working with the Anambra State government from the era of P2B, you know. So if Nollywood has brothers and sisters, I'm the only surviving sibling <laughs> who has not yes. left, even after reading yeah. law, has come back. So if P2B, I mean, Peter Doche, 75, going to 76 years, it's not biological. Yeah. He's my father and senior. But in the home video, Mkachilo, okay. Before, yeah, right. before him. And it's not contestable. Okay. But when it comes to uh, who started what and so on, let's go to history a little bit. Michael Rehedema was making his pl small plays mm. in Onecha. People were buying. Next video links, Kenneth Nebuet, yeah. was in Lagos producing Euro Yoruba films. Yes. So, 1992, he also, in that wise, Produce a home video called Living in Bondage. The one that Chris Obirapu... Chris Obirapu was the first I, I, director. I don't, I don't think Chris Obirapu gets as much kudos for what he did on that movie. No, 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 no. I, it I, doesn't. I, 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 it pains me. You know, no, no. It, it pains it, me to nah, today. Yes. Um, if, that Chris Obirapu should, should... When people talk about national honors and awards... No, the, the thing is this. National honors... I'm a, I'm a member of the Order of the Federal Republic conferred by President Gulag Jonathan in 2010. Yep. So I, I'm, I'm a MFR, you know, thanks to the nation for that. But what impact does it create? 
like the brother I said some time ago, he has M O N without E Y. Without the EY. We're not looking for the E Y. But what we're saying is this: there are people who have grown industries. Stop giving people who have money. There are situations in Nigeria. Any man who enters with a happening car, what well, what happening car in Nigeria, Range Rover, mm. um, Land Cruiser, into the VIP, they open the gates for mm. him. As long as you have escort, it could be one idiot yeah. who's, who has too much money. But he sits at where those of us who have national honors sit. So sometimes he messes up your na the national honors. It's no longer about honor. It's about how much you have in your mm. account. Quite unfortunate. You know. So uh, when you look at the likes of Kenneth in Nebu, I'm not, I'm not sure he has a national honor. Chris Obirapo, we know him. Chris was my first director in Enuguya in Masquerade. Yeah. 1984. I remember. He was first director sent to direct New Masquerade in 1984. Then about 1986, uh, after some sections, Bolaji Dawodu was sent by NTA when NTA had a zonal structure yeah. of zone A, zone B, and all this stuff. And Bolaji came, and after directing one or two episodes, called me and said, what are you doing here? I said, I live in Enugu. That's why I act. I said, no, your acting is for Lagos. I'm telling you the words of Bolaji mm. Dawodu. He's still alive. Your acting is, your standard is of Lagos. You must live here. You're willing to die your character. That was how six months later or nine months later, I left I left uh, Enugu for Lagos. And when I started appearing in national programs, that's the story of KOK. Yeah. When I started appearing in national programs, Ejika Asiebu, Bob Mandel had gone on, we're all, we all in Enugu yeah. here, had gone on to University of Port Harcourt to do their diploma in theater arts. Yeah, that's... When they saw I was doing well, that's how they came to Lagos. If I hadn't done well in Lagos, Bob Mandel, Udoku, I'm calling them, Ejika Asiebu, wouldn't have had anything to come. So this is the story we're trying to tell. And... Anybody who begins to talk about um, Yoruba started Nollywood. From what point? What we're saying is this. What gave rise to the shine and thunder we have today is living in bondage as a home video. Now created that momentum moment, momentum for it and we rose from it. So it, sh it, should, it should not be a situation where creativity is being personalized. Mm -hmm. Let's tell from the point of view. We may not yeah. lay too much claim. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we should lay too much claim as Igbos. I don't see myself as an Igbo person when I'm acting a movie. Yeah. It should be about contributions. So anybody who wants to speak on, um, uh, we're not, okay, just like uh, Baba, uh, Papa, Hubert. Uh, Hubert Ogunde. Very good. You can't contend it. You can't contend with Olu Jacobs taking yeah. part in American things and so on. Yeah. They started this since abroad. But when it comes to the... Nollywood industry, that momentum was created by, um, no, by living in bondage, and there should be no contention about who took part in it and, and what it has given rise to. And it didn't even matter that it was, it was done in Igbo. It, was, um, it didn't matter. Everybody watched it from whether you were Hausa, Yoruba, Ijo, everybody. That's, everybody that's, just, that should be the, that's the history. Everybody enjoyed that's it. That's the history. Um, the same way we watch Indian films. We don't, exactly. we don't speak Hindu. We, or, that's but it. We, we, we love to watch That's uh, it. It's, it's unfortunate. It's just like the Hilda Bassi thing. She cooked for 100 hours the same week. And that's a bad aspect of being a Nigerian. The same week, somebody yeah. says, I can cook for 120 hours. The, Why don't you allow her please <laughs> rain for six months? It took four years for the Indian woman who cooked yeah. for her record to be broken. Nigerians joke with creativity and they sensationalize creativity, and that's a very sad one. Very and, sad. Uh, can you repeat that? Is it Nigerians sensationalize creativity? Yes. I think that's a quotable quote. Um, we, we're going to go on this break, and then we'll come back because we, you know, um, if I... If I, if me and KOK continue, if it enter twenty four hours conversation, mm -hmm. but uh, KOK just just maintain this thought um, as we come back because you know it's I think I will just go from there. Enugu, Enugu used to be the center for a lot of the production we lot. talked about. A whole lot. Um, today, if not for people like you and a few others. Um, we're not there, so we'll come back and I, and I, and I, you know, um, you know, talk a bit more with um, the legendary KOK on uh, um, where we are. Enugu is a creative, as a, as a, as a creative hub for the southeast and mm. indeed the southern Nigeria, mm. and what's missing. We'll be back in a minute.
Brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. for joining me on Libations. Thank you. I've been I was I was telling my producer that if we don't get maybe it's kidnap we'll use or <laughs> because, uh, um, we can't I mean given our relationship sometimes I I I I, I, I use you both too. I say, yeah, okay, okay, he's my, my man, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's. I, I say, can, I, I can get him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they will ask me, say, ah, but you say, okay. I say, I say, no, he's busy. I'm, I'm talking to you. We're, we're in communication, right? Yeah, but the, <laughs> but you see, that's 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 the difference when we come from way back, you know. And that's why it's good to keep a good record yeah. about when you were in office. I could, you know, I would just drop by. Yeah, and. Yeah, the DG's friend. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just walk in, see you, and off I go, you know. And if you had restrictions to keep me in the waiting room, I won't be talking now. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm paying people back in their own coins <laughs> who are gods when they are in public office. Yeah. Um, there's this guy I've refused to talk to politically oh, because I had worked for some money at the floor of the Transcorp Hilt in Abuja. He had the money in his pocket. kept they kept discussing with me on the and being on the phone mm. for thirty minutes. Even in the next world, I have not forgiven him. He's from Imo State, and today he's not doing well politically. So people should not see government yeah. office as. No, I mean it's it's these things are so transient. They are tra transient. I, mean, um, I tell the story often that when I left as DG Census Board two thousand and twelve. Um, you know, before then, my phone would ring all the time. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, this person's mm -hmm. calling me. This person's calling mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So a month later, you know, I'm sitting with my wife. We're, we're just in the living room watching TV. He just said, "America, phone guy, the one Yes. I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "I'm sitting that's here not been ringing. and nobody's your phone that's has it. not rang for like." That's what people must understand. I said, public office. He said, "And you know, wicked woman." She says, "Come on, you can marry. Come on, my phone guy, can I walk?" That's it. You know, she called the phone ring. She said, "Okay, that she just wanted to be sure because before." Every two minutes, I'm there. Hello? Uh, yeah, hello. You know, and, and that's the thing, you know, in office, it's not, it's, don't mistake your office for your, you know, maintain a certain relationship and don't use the office as, you know, uh, you know, uh, let I'm me a DG talk, let me, I'm, yeah, let me say on this program, um, in 2011, I was to better my mom. And I had many senators who were my friends. I had governors who were my friends. I wrote to all of them, this, this, this. Um, by two weeks after the funeral, Peter Obi calls me by 1 a.m. in his little voice. I said, one them, I just got your letter. Hey, the, I know the burial is over. Biko, you know I would have come if I saw your letter. Mm, one... Now, Mr. and he sent to me exactly the price of a cow. Mm. And, um, you know, somebody would have uh, thought um, he will give you two million mm. for burial in 2011. I want to say it on this program. I think he went to the market and priced a cow. The cow was <laughs> 250,000. And that's what he sent to me. But the story here yeah, but, is but this. It's the, he it's the was a governor, but he had time to call me. Some of us are too busy for our friends. Then when we left, when they leave office, mm. my brother, that job wanted to kill mm. me. If you can't return calls, even one week or two weeks later, we are not friends. Yeah. Because the, 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 the danger in occupying a public office in Nigeria, and I've said it severally, no person should fly business class when you are serving government. It should all be economic. economic. Then if you want, upgrade it with your personal money. money. Most countries like Zambia are surviving. So this idea of uh, a president, a governor, is going abroad with the state money. And Flying there are price. eight, hundred of them following. At whose expense? Let it be a national policy that government only sponsors economic yeah. class. If you want, thinking you are you're from a royal family, you can upgrade. That way we can begin to mm. tell our story. Because I've always said it. Because you remember what uh, our line Mohammed Say that, that Nolly was pro promoting pros promiscuity, mm. Nollywood was promoting ritual, and so on. We say, who promotes rigging in election? Yeah. <laughs> Same you. Yeah. So, we must do things right. That's the point I'm trying to make. 
Thank you so much. And so, I mean, it's, it's very important. Um, and I think there's a spirit of um, accountability that is, is necessary for, for us to develop as a nation. Um, but I'm not going to let you go without asking you. The Enugu thing the Enugu you talk thing, about. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so because we, we saw a, a time when productions moved from Lagos to Enugu. You know, I remember, um, you know, on uh, Ab what's that place in Abani Road at the end of Abani Road, just um, the towards, hotel, the hotel, something so, Palace Hotel. Pal yes, mm -hmm. uh, that was so popular. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, um, mm -hmm. I, I visited a few times when I was DG, of, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so it was a bustling, yeah. bustling ecosystem mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then, a few years later, it went down. Mm -hmm. Everybody moved back to, of course, Lagos was still happening, but yeah. a lot of productions were. We're here. here. Eighty percent was yeah. here. And then today, mm -hmm. you know, Enugu struggles. And yeah, it should not be. It should not be. Well, first of all, Enugu used to be the hub of uh, productions from the NTA days. NTA, I think Enugu was zone B. I think so. And uh, most content came from here. Mm. Um, I remember I was a few days ago, I was with Uku Rocks, Emma. Uh, was my guest in Enugu here. Mm. Uh, lodged him in a hotel, even though he could afford it. And then we talked about the days and what mm. to do in this modern era. I remember mm. uh, the Nigerian Festival of Television plays, Knife a Tap, went with uh, uh, this way to Asso Rock and so on. And the zones, and that's what is not happening today. Yeah. NTA, the zonal structure is gone. And they have nothing. This was a day in some NTA that raised most of us. Yeah. Some of us came from the house of NTA. And that's why we can manage certain things and the discipline we have is from the NTA days. But these days, there's no competition between one NTA station and the other. So it was a structure that uh, was good mm. for competition. The NTA uh, stations were creating drama yeah. and so on and what. That, I mean that that's how like your your um, um, the 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 uh, we call him like the godfather of uh, of of productions. Peter Ego. Peter Ego. Peter Ego. Yes. Um, I'm still in touch with, with him. With, with Amaka Ego. That's how he very mentored good. Amaka Ego. Very good. Um, to create. Very good. Yeah. So NTA needs to pri you know to collaborate with private producers yes. to raise the standards. You must not just talk about the president or governor of a state you know, on your channels. You know, so now let's go back to the business side of it. The hub is still there to tap from. And that's why Alpha TV, you do well by covering the entire side of and beyond because there's a lot to do from yeah. here. The, uh, uh, the likes of Bassi and Company, championed by... I, I, I remember driving past Intransic Cooler. I was telling someone, I said, I know that building where Intransic Cooler, as you go onto... Uh, Sixth Avenue six, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the building is still there. And yes. Now somebody's right. I said, that's history. We should actually have a plaque. That's where that New Masquerade Yes. The, yeah, the we're, we're, camped. we're camped. Yeah. We should actually put Bassi and Company. Uh, exactly. We should actually have a plaque on that building. Yes, because I was I was in I was in New Masquerade. We were recording in Studio A. Bassi and Company was Studio B. Yeah. I still remember in the 80s, you know. So, but we haven't really explored certain things yeah. with the Enugu. Um Living in bondage was made in Lagos. I want to just go back to the story. And then we were shot somewhere around Ikorodu and then Lagos and Varon, you know, for some of the port scenes and so on. And then um, things went on after living in bondage. We met Circle of Doom. And it was an era where there was no integrated banking system. Mm. Everything was done cash. So if a producer needed to come from Onitsha, because the Onitsha people, give close kudos to them, yeah. with their little education, with their little capacity in um, creating stories. One thing that went right for them was their knack or the niche to see a good story and say, yes. Kaimenya, let's do it now. Unlike when you went to a bank, your story will be read for six months mm. by the Lego department and nothing comes out of it. So... When they are coming to shoot that film and you tell them four million, they will bring the four million cash on a boot. Mm. <laughs> and you go to the boot and you, mm. see, you see, I has the money on or there. You produce on under that one week, the next one month, the money is in the market. But the time came when it became an inconvenience to be carried the cash. That's, that's what gave rise to them wanting their money to be close to them. And the nearest place was either on Onicha or Enugu. Mm. So we started coming to Enugu. Oh, that was the transition. Oh, wow. So when they came yeah. to Enugu, 
I remember we were at, we hadn't gone to Nyko or McDevoss Hotel. Mm. Yeah, there was McDevoss this hotel in Independence Lay out here. Yeah. Those were letter stories. There was this hotel here. In fact, when they came, we were at a presidential hotel. And I don't want to tell the Obasanjo angle of this story. Mm. <laughs> Obasanjo has just won the presidency and... I'll, I'll, I'll leave it unless you tell me to tell it. Then we... Uh, please tell it. I called, I called <laughs> Pete. I called Pete Iduchi. He said, I got to give you. I am on this hotel. I said, okay, man, you're going to go to this I went and found one hotel. Better place. 10 or 15 rooms. Somewhere around Obiago. Mm. And I called Pete and to say, I'm going to go to the congest. And we stayed. And they now discovered First Hotel after that. Mm. First Hotel was a three, four story building. Put more artists there and so on. And then the industry started striving. Yeah. The Obasanjo story was like he had just won the presidency. And then we, there was this security man running up and down. The man was uh, in trouble with his tummy. I'm telling you. Mm. Yeah. And then it was like, who could uh, oblige his room? President, a uh, presidential, a uh, president elect was around, and, and it was it was me. I said, okay, uh, uh, let Baba. So I mean, he up to now he doesn't know. I mean, yeah. they took him there, fresh himself, and went. Now, from there, we moved, you know. So, but the idea was, yeah. these producers, marketers needed to move their investments nearer home. Near home. That's what led to the movement from Come Lagos. Me. To Enugu mm -hmm. and subsequently Onicha, and then Owere, and then Asaba, as today. Mm. Any other story is not a story. Wow, this is significant because, um, as told by an, you know, I mean, you and obviously you're an insider, an insider, um, not just an, an active insider. Mm. Till to you know, it's not you're not telling me something because you did it twenty years. You're mm. still in it, mm -hmm. uh, and it's significant for people to know that because people I, and I, I know the contribution of. The of marketers. Yes, I, I mean I'm, I'm fully aware. Of Very that. huge as, as, a, as a DG of the female video yes, I know, course. You know, of course, I I know the significance. But I didn't know. You know, honestly, I didn't know that this was the the actual logistic. That it was mostly the fact of Enugu was was mostly a logistic a logistic issue, issue that they needed to solve. That and the other issue was this: most of the producers. And if, I, if anybody comes to say and controvert this, I mention producers who ate it in that word, marketers' money. That made them know, I want to go this artist. Can you go on a column on the phone? Most of the producers mm. embezzled the money of these marketers. So they now said, man, away shoot. Yeah. Okay. And that's what actually now brought them. Brought them into mm. the sphere of what we have today. Most of them were not interested. OJ went to become a uh, shoot one film, Long the Lonnie, long before. That's where that uh, mm, thing came yeah. from. Long the Lonnie. Yeah. He after the rating, that's why yeah. he said, I will yeah. do. <laughs> the, most of the producers dealt with them. You give a producer as a den, maybe 4 million. He will use the first 1.8 million to buy a V boot. He has not start, started mm. planning the production. So it's, it was like, I remember vividly. Oliver the Cook. And I'm mentioning names. How to go to Bonag as a marketer in Idumata um, um, to collect his money. So now that I've called names, I know what I'm talking about. I can still call back what happened 32 years ago. That's exactly what brought these guys into the sphere. And for some of them, they had to ease out because they found out that it was a technical area. Mm. Uh -huh. But they, a lot of them had reason to cry yeah. because most producers had dealt with them. And those who have dealt with them, None of them have survived up to today. Mm. And that's the story of Nolly. Kama. Yeah, Kama. Kama is dealing with them. I know of somebody who camped a girl in a hotel in, for nine months in Lagos. And after that, he fizzled out. I can call his name. You know, so it was quite unfortunate. Mm. But the history needs to be straightened about how we were able to transit. But he denied Lagos a lot of, of, a lot of jobs. And content. But Lagos will be what it is. And today, Lagos prides itself with more quality productions. And just last year, or no, I think this year, um, I was not 
so happy. And I've been saying it, and I seem to be the, the lone voice. I, vi I was at the African Movie Choice Viewers at Choice Awards for 2023, and um, no mention of any production from Asaba. Yes, yeah, that became an issue, actually. It has be to become an issue because yeah. I had to meet with producers in Asaba. I've always called, I'm one of those who call Asaba, Sodom and Gomorrah. And in Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, there's no order. Mm. Survival of the mightiest. Yeah, yeah. People are in Asaba, exposing their bodies as ladies, doing like they would say in Nigeria, not caring about the content. No single production all through the year was mentioned. It's a sad commentary. Not good for the Southeast or South yeah. South as a block to present something. And that means for that year, they're not selling. Yeah. I mean, give kudos to Goizu and one or two other people. But what content? Are they just genetic content for YouTube? Don't you have? Because that seems to be, I mean, I like the way you've, uh, you've taken charge of this conversation, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and you, because it, it shows you understand the issues. Um, the impact of uh, digital streaming platform, YouTube, um, people just creating content basically for YouTube. And, and I, I think also the streaming platform like your Netflix, your Showmax, mm. your now on Amazon. Um, I think our sister has moved from, um, she was head of uh, Wangi. Wangi. From now she's at Book, yeah. um, uh, Amazon uh, Videos. It's a good thing, isn't it? It's very that good. they're bringing money. It's very a good. good. Thing. In fact, yeah. most most of the marketers would have gone back to the, their villages by now, if not for the problem. These marketers have is that because of the little money they make from their orgas and through the sale of certain things, they become people who are in charge of technical areas. Mm. They will never borrow expertise. For instance. And logic tells me that each time I watch a foreign movie, I see three, four, five executive producers. It's very difficult for you to see on a film where you have just one executive producer. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. I proposed something when you were DG, and I said, let us have two, three, four producers bring money together. Yeah. But here, you have very greedy people who, are, who don't trust each other, and what they think is, uh, let my 15 million I put in this movie, big money, let me sponsor it. No. Decide amongst yourselves, five of you, four of you, three of you, as executive producers, bring 50 million. Invest in yeah. something you can read for the next two years, and transmit and translate to other yeah. platforms, and make money. Not every, some of them are in the habit of being on location every week. It's not about being on location every week. It's about what content you have, Creative. what impacts you make. Because the tendency has always been whatever movie you release in August, by September is an old movie. Mm. That's not the way creativity works. That's not the way that uh, uh, stations mm. should be handled. So I still say it, there's need for people to collaborate, make better content. Have bigger phones. That way, we'll have an industry that pays well. All this idea of KOK, metonomia, mm -hmm. should not be. Mm. You know, all this idea of blackmail, nah, uh, this thing. All this idea of uh, doing it, uh, I want one small film, Jody. I don't do small films again. What should happen is do it as business. Mm -hmm. We don't expect to be paid $1 million per movie. But for goodness sake, even a civil servant rises in his job. Yeah. You paid me $1 million four years ago, three years ago. You now come and now pay, want to pay me six hundred. Am I going forward or backwards? backwards. And that's, that's my contention about it. We need to uh, refocus. The marketers we have, most of them have also fizzled out. And the danger in their fizzling out is that most of them have gone on to invest in hotels. They never invested in equipment. 
What I'm saying is just uh, yeah, I know, the, I know what the industry. The fact. None of them invested in a in a production studio. None of them invested in a production house. And this is the industry that gave you all the money yeah. that you even lied to us. This film didn't sell up to yeah. uh, two hundred thousand copies. Meanwhile, we know this film by the standards and uh, research we have sold about two million. And that has been the lies going on in the industry. And most of my colleagues who are no longer active and. Um, in, in the business, believed all the stories. I'm one person who has never believed all the lies told by, told by marketers. Because the day we know a, a marketer has money is the day he's burying his father. Mm. It is there you know he built a beautiful house and has a Range Rover and a Land Cruiser. But yeah. when he's coming to location, he's coming in Keke Marwa. I, 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 I actually, this is so, I mean, it's one of the things I try to do with the new distribution framework to bring, I, I call it accountability mm -hmm. and so on. And they fought me like mad uh, because they didn't, they didn't, they didn't want that uh, accountability. No, that's yeah. but the, but anybody who doesn't want accountability is just deceiving himself because there will be others who are also in the same range with you would say, "Let's do business." You take thirty percent. As an actor, what stops me from collaborating with Mekemba and say this story you want me to act in? Okay, you need thirty million. I have my ten million. Can I invest? Mm. As an actor, I invest ten million. So I have different uh, streams of income. I earn from here, I earn from here, and so on. What does it cost you if we, if we do business together? Yeah. I mean, that's not, you see some uh, uh, Cameron and so on, or Spielberg, earning as a, he's a director, yeah. known as a director, but he invests in certain movies. Yes, and so do all the American actors. You know somewhere to put your money. Nigerian producers must begin to look for collaborations. Not just doing it alone. That's, the, the era of trying to achieve it alone is gone. You know? Thank, thank you so much. Um, we're coming to the final part of this. I told you guys, it's very special. This is someone who is Nollywood himself from the very beginning of what we now know as Nollywood. And even before then, you know, in NTA, and, um, which a lot of the people we now know as Nollywood came from um, NTA. So when we come back, I'll just, you know, want to ask you a few personal questions and then we'll sort of, you know, um, end the show on, on that note. So we, we'll be back in a minute, guys. Um, I'm sure you're glued to your sets already. So if you missed this one, are you savvy?